let's see from FF13. The stream is starting up. Let me boot some other things open. Uh, it'll take five, ten minutes for people to turn up anyway, so. Does it say I'm live? The chat thing hasn't said I'm live yet. So we gotta wait for that. Uh, let me bring up. Uh, okay, so I actually did a bit off screen. Um, uh, a few side quests off stream, nothing too major. There we go, now it says I'm live. Nothing too major, but um, I did do a little bit, a little bit off stream. Um, I did a monster extermination quest, uh, I did the fishing quest, and I did like some quests to go gather some, or go get this doctor some like herbs from like the, the church. And there's like a story, it was a, it's a good little side story, but it just wasn't something I was wanting to do on stream. Um, the fishing quest was a bit annoying, just a little bit, um, and the monster hunt was pretty pretty easy. But we, I did leave one side quest. I did leave one side quest to do on stream because I thought maybe it would have something relevant to the like overall kind of uh, like story of this game, like for the characters and stuff. So there's a quest we've got called Testaments Training. So we met the Testaments in the prologue, right? We met uh, that gang in the prologue, so we're going to be going and help and train them. So I'm thinking it's possible that we'll get, uh, you know, some boss battles or, you know, some development for these characters we've met that were part of the main story, right? So uh, today, today I'm going to do that, and then it's pretty much plain sailing for the rest of chapter 2 um, uh, but there's a hidden quest apparently closer to the woods at the end of this chapter but I need to you know keep keep tabs on um, but other than that I'm gonna get I'm hoping the goal today is to get chapter 2 done like finished today so Hopefully we'll be we'll be done with it and we can get on to chapter three for next week, which will be good. Because um, my I've always said this, my goal is to try and do um, a chapter a week if possible. So um, that's the plan. That's the plan. Okay. So I need to talk. I think it's here, right? These are testament. I think. Uh, if you accept, come down to Abbas. Oh, is Abbas uh, Morpheus looking Belend? Yeah, there we go. So you want us to train the Testaments? That's a bit of a risky request, don't you think? What makes you so sure that we train a bunch of delinquents anyway? So, by the way, I found out what was causing quality drops in the stream. Um, apparently, and I don't know if it's changed, people will have to tell me, but apparently Twitch limits free users to how good, like how their stream looks. So apparently you can, I can't do the things I want to, um, or have the bitrate a certain uh, thing if, if like I'm a, not an affiliate or not a whatever. So we're going to have to wait for that, I guess. This is all your idea. I explain the details. Morpheus Summer. So we're gonna fight him, maybe. Is he gonna be like an optional boss? <laughs> you wanna be taught self defense? <laughs> Let's suppose that the Mafia. Okay, yeah. They wanna be safe from the Mafia. So they don't wanna uh, fall into the same trap they did earlier on in the game when they were basically kind of pushed into a gang war yo immortal yo 
just made it just in time. I did some side quests off stream today before I went live. Um, but I didn't do this one. I didn't do this side quest because I thought it might be a good one to do. But my plan today is to finish chapter 2. My plan today is to finish chapter 2. Get that done. Get that done and dusted. Uh, this is... This is like one that we, we're training uh, Testament, the gang we met in the prologue. All the other quests were like, there was a monster hunting one, there was a fishing one, and then there was one where I had to go get some herbs for some dude. There's like a, a neat little side story, but I just didn't want it to take too long on the stream. So I, I kind of, but I left this one because I thought it might be a decent one to do. Like I want to, I want to do side quests on stream, but the issue is that some of them just take up so much time. Um, so I sort of do them as and when I'm kind of pushed in that direction. Um, like if I'm forced to do it in a specific amount of time and I'm on stream, then I'll do them, of course. But if they're like fishing quests and monster extermination ones, I can do those off stream if if I'm not streaming at that time. So these guys just want to get self-defense, right? Because they don't want to be uh, victims to the Mafia again. Special technique taught at the police academy. Okay. Okay, let's do it. This is going to be similar to when I... Earlier on in this chapter. Where I took on... Um, the gate guards in that optional quest and the final boss was a uh, Noel Seeker, the second in command of um second in command. What am I talking about? The right hand of uh Deputy Commander Bales for the Guardian Corps. Okay, cool. Everybody assemble. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Battle time. Battle time. The objective is a four on four battle. The testaments will fight the special support section with all of their might. Okay, let's let's do it. Let's see how well we can control the tide of battle. Okay. Let's go! Fucking do this. Let's do this. Beat these. Beat these balance. Uh, encourage. This is what I always used to do with Estelle. Is I use um. I use encourage. Uh, to up my. Oh fuck. To up my um my damage output. Sapeto. Here we go. I don't think these guys are going to be weak to magic. So I'm just going to hit them with uh, crafts and stuff. And melee attack. Summon Zite. I could do that, but I'm not going to use that just yet. Do we want to use that? Use it on this dude. Beam Zander? Nah, that's a shit ability. I don't use that. Aerosicle? Okay, he might have been pushed out because of that attack. Well, I killed one of them at least. Yeah. 
Duh. There we go. Another one down. Oh shit, my my thing's gone down. Uh, recovery. There we go. Not too bad, not too bad. But I, I'm going to assume, similar to the fight against the the guards at the gate, I'm going to assume this is there's going to be a second fight probably. How come we couldn't take you down with a relentless assault like that? So thanks to the techniques we learned to suppress a target, it requires extensive training, can even prove effective on small groups. A detective has to not only protect himself, but also those around him. We undergo extensive training to stay calm no matter the levels of stress. You'd all do well to train how to protect yourselves. Okay. Just talk, I guess. I feel like I can take them on next time. Hey, sure, go on. Try it next time. I love better gear. I also found out that this game has um, an enhancement system. So you can, if you get, I don't know how to get them, but there's like an item or like material you can get in the game. But if you get enough of, if you unequip, you know, your best weapon or whatever weapon you have. Yeah, you material, that's it. Um, you can upgrade your weapons to a better state. I don't remember that being in the Sky games, but maybe I just didn't come across it. Oh, we're gonna fight the Saber Vipers now. Man, I'm so glad that it's, it's nice and cool today. It's not too warm. Now there isn't this guy. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember there being one. Uh, from what I remember. Them. Man, it's so nice th that I'm not sweating. I, it's not hot. It's not, you know, too much. I can just sit here and, you know be nice and cool. I still got my fan on because, you know, like, the cooler I am, the better. But now I, I don't I don't have to sit here and go, oh my god, it's too hot, 30 something degrees. Skyworks on a, on a plane stats, uh, plane stats from we to weapon upgrade system, yeah. Here we go. So I upgraded Lloyd's weapon. I should have upgraded Randy's, but I didn't know that I didn't have that many um, things, but it's fine, it's fine, I, like, the ones that I'd upgrade are Lloyd and Randy, like, Tio and, and Ellie, I don't really feel I need to upgrade, to be honest, they're more magic users anyway, I'm surprised I haven't got another party member, I'm actually surprised at that. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna fight Saber Vipers now. I wonder if the final boss is gonna be both of them together. Hopefully if Ellie's got enough CP, I'm gonna quickly pop um, Holy Bullet. Oro Bandana. Okay, she's got enough for Holy Bullet. I'm just gonna quickly top everyone up. Oh, fuck no. Come on. Randy. Randy Pandy. What is this? Oh, she. Oh, she's been. Uh, what's it called? She's been. Uh, fuck. Sealed, I think. I fucking can't. I always get mixed up. Yeah, it's sealed, right? Pump for power smash. This is such a useful ability. His um, his power smash. Okay, attack delays. Attack, attack delays as well as causing pretty decent damage. Uh, 
these guys. Attack delay. Nice. That was luck. That was kind of lucky there. That I managed to pull off that uh, that stun. Okay, now we've got persona style group attack here. With I think strength up. I think I've still got strength up for this. Look at that. Look at that. It's over. It's fucking over. It's fucking over. These guys were much easier than like not that the testament guys were hard. But those guys were literally like easy. Easy peasy. Maybe that's the last battle. Just as weak as those hooded freaks. I'm guessing they're sworn rivals here. They always want to one up, right? Wald and uh, uh, Wald and what's his name? Wazy. Wald and Wazy. They can't hope to compete with us. You ass for an ass kicking. Let's engage in combat one final time. One more time. The rules are simple. Whoever is able to bring the officers to their knees first will be deemed victorious. Okay. So I guess I was right. We're going to have to fight both of them. Oh, bloody hell. But a good thing that I, I got... I've still got a Zeit. I can still use Zeit. I can still use Zeit. So... Look at this, look how oh, bloody... Let's encourage. Uh, summon Zite. Here we go, Zite Summer. Here he comes. Here he comes. Divine Wolf Zite. Okay, his turn's not for a while yet. Oh, you fuck. Look at this. All together. All to fucking together. Look at that. Look at that fucking damage. You can summon. Yeah, Zite. He's the only one I can summon at the moment. Because I guess he, they couldn't make they couldn't make Zite a party member. Or is it just like that? Yeah, it just disappears after that. It does a random thing. So he might defense down everyone. He might attack delay everyone. He might um, just do an attack himself. Um, he's not like a proper party member. It's like a summon, I guess. It's like a, a summon ability. I love this. I love this battle theme. This battle theme is awesome. I fucking love it. Oh, fucking greatness. This might be up there as maybe one of my favourite battle themes in Trails. Not my favourite, but one of them. This is a damn good battle theme. Gets me pumped. Gets me fucking pumped. Oh no, bandana! Yeah, they're taking a bit of a beating now. Okay, let's encourage again. Actually, to be honest, I could just randy pandy them. Here we go, Crimson Gale. Crimson Gale. Fucking take that, you balance. There we go. I've also found out, I think, that 
Um, most uh, buffs stack. So I, as you can see there, Randy's got the yellow arrow, which just means I think he's got one stack. And I think the red, uh, red arrow, I think, means uh, double stack. Which I don't don't think was in the Sky games. Like I mean, you just in the Sky games, it would be just you reapplying the the buff. Learned it while playing third. Was it in third? I don't recall it being in third. Because I remember using abilities multiple times on enemies, and it wouldn't do anything. From my knowledge, I don't remember that. I think I remember using the same abilities multiple times and it didn't do anything. But reapply the stack. Do you understand yet? So yeah, we beat them. We beat these balance. Maybe I'll have to replay it. Maybe, maybe, I'd, maybe I've just forgotten. But I don't remember it happening. are plenty strong not too bad that wasn't too hard a fight wasn't too hard a fight this was a good side quest this was a good side quest I liked it three three battles of increasing well not increasing difficulty first two were pretty easy the second one was just like more enemies That was exhausting. If you'd like to take a rest, then why not come to our bar later? The uh, Trinity Bar. It's like uh, Tifa's Tifa's bar in FF7. See, I've got a big boobed uh, bartender. That was the amazing thing about the remake. They somehow made Aerith because everyone loved Aerith right I was always more of a Tifa guy even in when the original was around I was always I always preferred Tifa over Aerith but for the Aerith lovers Aerith wasn't as good in the remake as Tifa was you prefer T yeah I preferred Tifa like I prefer a character I prefer like you know people you know they did this thing where oh Aerith and Cloud you know the fact that you know, Cloud and... I, w I won't say anything, but Cloud and, you know, a Aerith's former boyfriend, etc, etc, like... So they were like, oh, those two be good together. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, the girl who's been his, his like, childhood friend, who's like... I just, I prefer a character as well. Like, someone, like... Like, a woman who, who can kick ass, but also is you know feminine like she's not like macho masculine or anything always preferred her Aerith was just too I don't know just too too girly too girly like super girly I, I, like I'm not too into that Super kind. It's like Lun Luna Freya in FF15. I could not give a shit about Luna Freya. But it's that kind of woman, right? But then again, I guess the reason I didn't really like Luna Freya was because the writing of FF15 wasn't that great. Like a lot of characters got sidelined. Which was a shame because. FF15 has a really cool, like, world. Like, it's such a shame that they... It took for them to... Um, it took them to make... Uh, like, they, I, I knew Ardyn's backstory before they released the DLC. But they had such a great fucking FF villain. Like, in my mind, Ardyn's story is... Like, Ardyn is a villain. If they had actually put his backstory and stuff in the game instead of shipping it in a DLC and 
having a spool in multiple guidebooks and bollocks for that. Ardin and I'm I'm being genuinely serious with this. I think Ardin would have been up there with the likes of Kefka, with the likes of Sephiroth. But because they didn't actually properly give him the development that the, the backstory that he had in the game itself, you had to find you had to sprawl all these different multimedia projects just to understand like Ardin's backstory. Like when I learned of Ardin's backstory, I actually wanted Ardin to win. Like you barely get that in an FF game where you want um where you want a villain to win. Like Sephiroth, you, you know, you understand Sephiroth's pain but you don't want him to win. Ardin I legit wanted to win after I found out his story. Somnus was a piece of shit. The the kings were a piece of shit. He fucking got fucked over by everyone. In fact, he was basically like Luna Freya. He had he had gone into the world to try and heal people, right? And you know, all he got from that was he sacrificed himself basically. He sacrificed his humanity. He was a fucking don. And I was like, you know what? Fuck not this. Fuck all these kings, man. Ardin deserves to win. Ardin deserved to win. And he's legit, probably, like, even despite the fact that FF15 has so many fucking glaring issues in terms of storytelling, Arden is still up there as one of my favourite FF villains. Like, I love his personality, I love his backstory, I love his design, like, I just wish, like, I, I knew that it was in de had development issues, right? As you're saying, administrative uh, problems in Square Enix and people being pushed around and stuff like they basically had to remake parts of the game and there was a whole other continent that was supposed to be in the game you know I'm glad Arden got like out of all the DLCs I'm glad that Arden's was the one that, that came about but like did you get the Ring of Kings in FF15, I platinum FF15. I can't, I can't remember what the Ring of Kings is. I didn't play the Arden DLC. I was happy that it was there, but by that time I had moved on with FF. I was like, cool. I know Arden's backstory already. I'm not going to spend what is it, 15 pounds on a DLC for something I already know, and it should have been there ages ago. Uh, which made Noctis do cool ass shit. I, I probably did, I probably did, but I played FF, like, FF15 on like, I planned them that it was in like a month, and then I never played it again, apart from when the first year DLCs came out, I never went and replayed it, so I can't remember, I actually, like, to me, the experience of FF15, while I enjoyed it and I platinumed it, it was like, for me, it was, it was an experience that after a while I would forget. Like, there's so many better JRPGs and stories out there that it just kind of became mediocre kind of FF to me that I, I forgot. But I probably did. I probably did. I tried to... I platinumed the Gladiolus DLC. And then I tried to platinum the Prompter and I, I think there was just something in the Prompter DLC that I was like, ah, fuck this. Your officer's operational funds. As you know, work will become much busier next month. Is he gonna try and put things into Ellie's head again? It's called Amiga Unleashed Mode. Sorry, sorry, Mort. I genuinely can't <laughs> can't remember if I did. If it was a trophy for FF, like getting it, I I probably got it. Um, like I got the flying car. I got, you know, all of that stuff. I did all the, the monster hunts, I did all the optional bosses, I fought Adamant toys, but I just, I put it on Discord. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check it after stream, I'll check it after stream. Changes the gameplay completely. One issue for me with the gameplay of FF15 is it felt too much like Kingdom Hearts. Button mash. You, like, people go... Oh, but you can use magic. Magic makes the game easier. You, like, I'm saying this as a matter of fact. You did not need magic. 
Sure, it made things easier, but you could blitz through that game just pressing the same button. Pressing the same button. Like, there was nothing in that game that was difficult. Magic was broken, but you never needed to use it. That was my issue. Like, I always felt in FFs, like old FFs, like you had to use magic. You had to learn weaknesses and strategize. FF15, you could spam the same button and win. That's all you needed to do. I used it on the last secret dungeons. I, I don't think I ever used magic at all. Maybe a couple times. I got through the game just spamming the same button. I never had a single difficulty. Like, the final boss, you can, like, as long as you have, like, 99, like, HP potions, you can just spam your way through the battle and then just keep on using healing potions. You don't even need to block or do anything. You can just spam. That's the issue with FF15 is it's combat is dog shit. Actual dog shit. At least, like, I, I'm not one to speak positively about Kingdom Hearts. Um, but, like, that was... One good thing about Kingdom Hearts was that at least its combat was a bit... There was a bit of variety to the combat, not just button mash everything. It's the last... There is a dungeon which doesn't allow you to use items. It's the last secret dungeon. Is that the one that's in the Royal Edition? The Royal... Like, the Insomnia dungeon. Because if so, I never did... I, I gave up with FF15. Like, I never played the Royal Edition. I was like, fuck this game and fuck its infinite DLC. Like, I played the first year DLC, I really enjoyed, Ignis's DLC was legit worth my money and time, the other two not so much, but by the time I finished um, the Ignis DLC, I was like, when they announced the Royal Edition, I was like, fuck this game, fuck this game, I'm done with it, I'm completely done with this game, in fact, I was kind of done, like, after the Prompto DLC, but because I had the season pass, I kind of played the Ign and Ignis one was good. The online one, uh, I played a bit of. It was alright. Um, but by the time they announced Royal Edition, I was like, you know what? Fuck Square Enix. Fuck all this bollocks. Then they announced the second year of DLC, and I was like, nah. Nah, I'm not having it. Like, I'm mo I moved on. I moved on. I played the com uh, what I paid for should have been complete and if you're still gonna tack on more things that i have to spend more money on you can fucking shove your dlc up your ass i have to apologize to you once more i'm going to con yeah she's gonna sit yeah she's telling Ernest. she's now certain i'm hoping ff16 is a bit more i'm hoping ff7 remake was good but it was good apart from the ending i was a bit I won't say too much about it, but I didn't really like the ending too much. Um, I thought it was interesting, but I'm kind of very kind of, uh, you know, you know, not, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm very kind of unsure. I'm very unsure with it. Um, but I also just don't like the feeling of the ending anyway. It doesn't feel FF7. Um, but I'm hoping the gameplay, at least for FF16, is more FF7 Remake than it is FF15. Or, and this is if we live in a dream world, if um, if they go back to turn-based. You know, turn-based is making a comeback. We had Dragon Quest XI, got great reviews. We got uh, Persona 5. Um, and of course, you know, Persona 4 Golden recently came to Steam, right? You know, we've got, you know, Yakuza. Yakuza has now become a turn-based game now. When, I don't think DQ went anything... No, but what I mean is like, like FF returning to turn-based. Like I'm saying that turn-based in general is making a comeback. Like Dragon Quest, yeah, has been turn-based forever. But I'm saying, in terms of the, the gaming marketplace, turn-based is making a comeback. People have keep on kept on saying, like, um, turn-based is dated. Turn-based has been been and gone. Yeah, like I, I I don't mean that Persona and DQ have come back to turn-based. I mean that turn-based, in in the general scheme of gaming, is starting to make a comeback. Persona, while it sold well for its fan base didn't sell really well until Persona 5. 
DQ11 sold really well compared to its previous D uh, Dragon Quests, is what I mean. And Yakuza, Yakuza has now become turn-based and sold really well in Japan and got really good reviews. So what I mean is like turn-based as a whole is starting to become more of a, um, you know, like something that companies are starting to use because the general public is starting to play more of it. Because turn-based haven't been relevant for like 15 years in terms of the main public eye. So it's about time that they're starting to get a, a bit more. Uh, I really like Death of Seven Remake gameplay. Um, I mean, I, I didn't mind it too. I didn't mind it too. I just feel that a lot there's been a lot of franchises that were turn-based that have become action RPGs. And those have existed since as long as JRPGs and they've never gone out of, you know, fashion, right? So I, I would prefer if there are games that are turn-based, that they stay turn-based, or they go back to turn-based, or we get more games that are starting to move away from action RPG into turn-based. Because it's been so long now that we've, we've just had this regurgitated action, and it's not bad, I'm not saying it's bad, but... JRPG, like turn-based JRPGs, are starting to get less and less, and they're converting more to action RPG rather than turn-based. Like FF7 remake was gameplay was was great. Like if FF16 is like that, I I'm not gonna be angry about it. But in a dream world, I'd love it to go back to turn-based. I'd love it. Okay. Nice. So I guess that plot thread is tied up now. Ellie has made a decision. <laughs> I need to make progress. I need to make progress. I waffle on too much. I don't want to talk too much and miss out on a lot of info. Um, but I do like I do like to uh, have conversations on my streams. I was, you know, there's there's no point in me streaming, right? Does he plans on joining either the Imperial or Republican factions? He's an experienced fencer. Oh shit! So Ellie's tutor and her grandfather's secretary um, is a fencer, man. It's like Philip. It's like Philip in Sky. Oh, here we go. Grace. I like that she's she's some she's different enough from Niall and Dorothy. She's not as, um, she's not as, uh, like, she doesn't write reports to benefit people. She writes reports too truthfully, but sometimes comes at the detriment of good people. And she's got, oh, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, whereas Niall and Dorothy were very open with the main characters. Away from crossbow, covering a different event that needed the grace touch. Hoping I could be the Triple S's sole report. I like writing articles about you guys. Well, getting dunked on all the time by your articles can wear you down, you know. It's like Mama Bird watching her chicks grow up. You do have business here, right? Yeah, I, I honestly, when you get the chance to play FF7 Remake, I recommend playing it. It's for the most part it's a really damn good remake. The ending is a bit iffy in my opinion, but that's just that. Can't wait for it to be available. It'll be interesting. Hopefully it will be ported better than Horizon was recently. Probably yeah, probably same time as this year, next year. I think a lot of the, the only thing that I'm concerned about with the FF7 remake is that because a lot of people who are new to FF7 started with the remake, they, like, a lot of people haven't played the original who've played the remake, right? They're like, oh shit, new game, new flashy game. Like, I can't play the original FF7 because everyone looks like, you know, triangles and, you know, like two polygons or whatever. And it's turn-based, so they played it, and now they don't want to play the part two because they want to wait for a complete version. 
that might affect sales. That might affect sales of like, initial sales for other parts. And if that does, it might also affect um, how exactly uh, we receive the remake. I'm just hoping. I I I would rather them. I'm gonna be completely honest. I would rather them work on because I, I I'm excited for it, for more FF7 remake stuff. But I would rather them release FF16 next or after part two. Like I want a new FF game. Apparently, I've heard they might return to fantasy a bit more fantasy in the next ff because i feel we've had a lot of ffs that have been kind of been slightly modern like uh ff 13 was slightly modern uh, ff 10 was kind of a mix of like modern ish ff 15 was very modern um i'm just hoping we get like a ff 9 or a bit similar to ff 12 where it's like a bit more fantasy Steampunk or fantasy. What was I doing here? I need to speak to the dieter, right? Let's see Mr. Croyce at the desk. Receptionist Lanfrey. Miss McDowell. Thank you for helping us test our new service. It couldn't have reached its current popularity without your efforts. I'm glad we were able to assist you. How may I help you today? I like that she references... I've always liked that about Trails games. When they reference quests that you've done for them. That you could have missed. I like that. I also like it in the sequel games. That they'll mention these quests you did. Even so I'd like to meet with him. Or is he absent? Regarding a certain incident. Leave it up to Ellie to crash the CEO's party like it's nothing. It's like she's from a totally different world. Okay, nice. In CS2, they mention quests you've done in CS1 if you know that. Yeah, that's what I mean, right? I like that. I like that Trails keeps that continuity. Maybe even if you don't. I mean, I usually do every single quest that I can. Like, every single quest that I find. Like, I usually have, like, a list so I don't miss anything. Um, because I'm kind of like that. Um. But, I like, I like how there's continuity in these games. I guess it's canon that you do, the canon would be that you do every single quest, right? Um. So I guess it's keeping in, in term with, like, the, the canon continuity. Access the appropriate rules. This was similar to um, some of the Ouroboros buildings in the Sky Games. The key cards for certain floors. Like you couldn't access the blue elevator unless you got the blue key card. You couldn't access this part of the Glorious without this key card. I have heard speculation the IBC provides approximately 60% of the funding. Okay. I believe the government provides 30%, but then the Epstein Foundation provides a final 10%. Oh, bloody hell. Epstein Foundation has got, you know, stacks. So, so this guy gives him a, So this guy we're about to see, he's like an entrepreneur, right? He's like head of the banks. So he, he provides a lot of shit, man. A lot of money. 16th floor. Okay, let's go. Gotta be careful of people in control of banks though. Gotta be careful. This dude might come out as villainous. We don't know. Or maybe maybe he's not, but in reality. <laughs> Damn, man. I visited the Epstein Foundation's office in this building, but it hardly compares. The view from this floor is exceptional. The CEO's office is at the end of the hallway. 
I think it'd be rude of us to keep him waiting after he agreed to meet us on such short notice. Okay, let's go. It's this way. What's in here? Bell's office. Who's that? I'm called Dieter or Dieta. Is it Dieta maybe? I think it's Dieta, right? There he is, un Uncle. Ellie's uncle. Ellie, it's been far too long, far too long, I say. Look at this guy. This guy looks, looks like a, you know, prim and proper. Prim and proper, proper guy. He reminds me a bit of Char. Char as Nabel. Or, um. What's his name? His actual name. Fuck. I can't remember Charles' actual name. Guys, you're doing well. My apologies for not having scheduled a proper appointment with you. Oh, Ellie, don't talk as though we're strangers. Please relax. You're my little girl's best friend. And a daughter of my own good friends as well. Surely you haven't forgotten. So I guess he's not her actual uncle, right? She's like... It's like, um... You know... I call him uncle because he spend a lot of time with them and... You know, they're close to people, you know. I once called someone auntie when I was a kid. We called them auntie because she was like... At, at that time, one of my mum's best friends. I haven't seen her in ages. Though. Haven't heard about her. Part of the special support section. My name is Lloyd Bannings. I've heard all about you in the Crossbow Times. I am Dieter Kreuz, CEO of the International Bank of Crossbow. Look at this guy. Look at this fucking guy. Lloyd, Randy, and Tio, you said? We're all friends here, so I would appreciate it if you were at ease around me. Oh my god, this reminds me, this legit reminds me of Phoenix Wright, there's a character who did this. Like he wore jewellery and stuff and he'd always do this pose. I believe you're here to ask me a few questions, might ask what they concern. They had to do with the threat letters, right? Yin and hey you and all this shit. This Yin fellow sent an orb mail from the IBC to your office, did he? We suspect it was sent by the IBC's main terminal. There is a strong possibility Yin took control of the terminal in order to do just that. I wonder if the end of this chapter is going to end with us facing off against this Yin. Or at least coming face to face with them. Only a few people can access it. So how, either this dude is connected, maybe it's even this guy, like I, I, I doubt that it is this guy, but like someone in the IBC, I mean he could have stolen ID and stuff, perhaps a recent hire or somebody who's been acting out of the ordinary, there isn't a single employee I don't trust, but that brings me to another thought Lloyd, have you not explored any other avenues? Let's see, okay, for example, what if I was pretending exactly? That's one thing you have to consider. Got to consider all angles, right? It's purely hypothetical, of course. I mean, he's joking about it, but, you know, we don't know. It feels like because they did that joke, I always notice this in stories, they throw something off as if it's a joke, as if, nah, that possibly couldn't happen. And they make a f try to make a point of it, like, you know, that can't happen. But, in actuality, it was him all along. I mean, I, d I don't know whether it is this guy, but, you know, and I doubt it is, but we'll see, I guess. Would I not essentially be implicated in that crime? That is certainly one way to look at it. Okay. Hey Tio, that transmission between the IBC and SSS terminals. 
Sounds like IBM. I think that's I think that's kind of, kind of what they're trying to do here. This is the international bank of Crossbell, I assume. Um, interesting question. It's possible that the IBC's main terminal was hacked from an external source. The hell does that mean? I don't fully understand it myself, but I believe it's a technique used for the uh, unauthorized operation of a terminal, primarily by breaching one's security system. That would be the core of it, yes. Any terminal connected to the orbital network can theoretically be... True, he could have hacked it. it there's got to be something to do with that blonde boy. That blonde boy at the start of the chapter. I'm calling it. He is connected to this crime. He is connected. He's probably the hacker. He might not be Yin. Maybe he's not Yin. But he's responsible. Or maybe... He, he's responsible for getting this letter through the IBC. I'm certain. But despite these limitations, we've already begun to encounter security issues. Did you... Nah. We saw Yin last stream. He appeared in the Heiyu headquarters. Apparently he's connected to Heiyu, this Calvardian mafia, right? Um, but we haven't fought him yet. We haven't come across him yet. But this kid, we saw a kid at the start of this chapter. This blonde kid who has like 10 computer screens. So I'm assuming he hacked the IBC network. He's, he's either working alongside Yin or helping Yin. Or he's seeing stuff with Yin happen. And he's, you know, wanting to utilize it for whatever reasons. I have an idea. Would you like to enter the terminal room and investigate for yourself? Okay, I guess we're going to investigate the terminal room. The IBC terminal room. I don't know how far away from the... The end of this chapter we are. I, I want to finish it today though. I'll do a long stream. Because it's not hot today so I can go longer. I might take a break in like 10-20 minutes maybe. And then I'll go go for longer today. Get it all done. It's reassuring to hear that from you. I see great potential in the form of you now that we've spoken face to face. Oh shit, there is the Crossbell theme. I'm sure you've realised this already, but Crossbell is plagued with a rather unique set of problems. And I'm sure Ellie is painfully aware of this as well. I believe that the most significant problem we face as a society is that justice has lost all substance. It has become a shadow of its former self. What do you mean, sir? How is that possible? The idea of the very concept of justice has become nothing more than an empty vessel, lip service if you will. Every individual has their own perspective, of course. That may be why some feel the need to loudly proclaim that it's dead. Justice has and never will exist in this state. However, no matter what people say, humans have never have ever been in pursuit of, have ever been in pursuit of justice. That is what drives us forward, gives us the will to move on. Justice. Yeah, Crossbell is very seedy, very fucking seedy. The fact that maf the mafias can get away with what they do, just because. Um, the politicians, with the, because they have a a business front, right? They look like legitimate businesses. And under the Business Act, you know, they're protected. They're immune. And of course, the politicians are part of the reasons why that is, because they're the ones who pass these these bills and acts, right? If criminals were not bound by that justice, we call law. Romania. It's happened in a lot of places as well. A lot of places have this, you know, I, I know F F Tanya talks about this. I don't want to talk too much about it because Tanya's not here, of course. But like, she lives in Colombia, right? And a huge issue is that in Colombia, um, they have a lot of drug crimes, like drug related stuff. But a part of what keeps Colombia afloat economically is its drug trade. I think I remember her telling. I might have got it wrong. I don't want to speak too much for it, but you know, politicians are letting it slide because it, you know, is what pays into it, right? 
so these mafias help protect Crossbell despite the fact that they're doing illegitimate seedy shit getting away with things into what they see as a dangerous world would you not agree where the police and politicians work together to traffic children and women big star into the air it's fucking sickening man our justice has in fact become something of a blurred ideal in crossbow true justice may yet be within our grasp the triple s division political corruption the criminal underworld even if the police cannot tame them the economic prosperity we currently experience allows our citizenry to live their lives in relative comfort Petty crime is at an all-time low because of it, but an unseen evil still spreads across our land. However, despite the dire situation, people still seek justice. From the very core of their being, they desire it once more. Because no matter what shape or form justice takes, people will always pursue the security that is a trustworthy society. Exactly. Fucking exactly. And that goes for ev- I think that happens for every country on this planet. This, this fact that a trustworthy society, a comfortable, trustworthy society, you know, that's what people want. And so when people have it, like they do now, they don't think about the things going on behind the scenes. That's precisely why Crossbow's braces experience the popularity they do. Exactly. Exactly. Because they're like a neutral party, right? A neutral party that protects the interests of the public rather than the interests of politicians and other shit. Braces, when you think about it, braces and crossbell are like vigilantes. They're like vigilantes in crossbell. Like everywhere else, they're just like adventurers, you know, mercenaries, and in, in, I guess you could say in some aspects. Um, here, they're seen as vigilantes, as heroes, as justice. And that's why I guess people don't look on the police in crossbell too well, right? Because they're connected to all these organizations. Because they are not justice. Though I'm, cer I'm certain you're aware of it, the extent to which braces can exercise justice is severely limited. That has been and continues to be their fatal flaw. Yeah, they can't, they can't do certain things right without like it being a request. It's simply impossible for them to resolve the injustices of the city. Exactly, they can't get a request to say, "Hey, look, sort out these politicians." You may be the cure to the plague Crossbow struggles against. Exactly. We're not the same as the police. We're not the same as the braces. But we, we're going to be hopefully capable of changing Crossbow. You all in your own way seem to be desperately pursuing justice. And it's important that you show it in ways your average Crossbow can comprehend. That way they can see that justice is not out of reach. Nice. Justice still lives on in Crossbell. You want us to give people a reason to believe that. This is just going to fuel Ellie's determination to stick with uh, the Triple S division, right? You know, going to be a politician isn't going to get you anywhere. Being a brace is not going to get you anywhere here. Being here might get you somewhere, though. And for that reason, every article that the Crossbell Times publishes on a special support section is vital to success but people notice and remember. You may still be young and inexperienced officers who make mistakes from time to time but I believe everyone will notice your earnest pursuit of justice. There will be a fair amount of naysayers however I don't believe that the majority of our citizenry has a negative perception of you. Yeah. That's why Dudley, Dudley that investigator from the first division, him taking the case away from us was like more of a reason for us to get involved with the case actually do our own investigation delivering a passionate speech in the heat of the moment let's return to the issue at hand shall we i believe i was about to give you permission yeah let's go to the terminal let me see i would gladly escort you but unfortunately i have many matters to attend to once our discussion has concluded I enjoyed our brief chat. That won't be necessary. Who's this? Who the fuck is this? Looks like she's got bloody springs on her head. Her haircut. Looks like if she fell over, she'd just bounce right up. Belle. <laughs> Belle. Oh, bloody hell. Belle Summer. 
two months, three. This is probably like a mother figure to her, right? Her own mother fucked off to Erebonia. Her, like, I'll be honest, her dad did some, made a dumb decision, right? He made a stupid decision. He made like a pussy decision. But her mother did an even worse like, move. She just abandoned her daughter, man. Actually, I boot some muscle given our daily routines. A bit more flexible. It's absolutely marvelous. It really is something to behold. Thank you, Adios. So I'll treasure this moment for the rest of my life. Randy's getting excited because he's seen two women squeezing, squeezing their boobs together. Or would you rather our guests continue to stare? Randy thinks some lesbian shit's going on. You wouldn't be surprised if they turned around and looked like his axe that he wields was in his pants. This is Mar Mariah Bell Croix, Uncle Dieter's daughter, and my best friend. Oh, okay. It's her best. So this is uh, his daughter. I thought this was like a uh, motherly figure, right? But I guess not. Oh. Oh, I, th I thought she recognized Randy, maybe. You're as cute as a button. What's she doing? And both of you fail miserably. What? What do you mean? The hell, I'm cute as a button too, cuter. The thought of you mangy mutts being my being by my dear Ellie's side day in, day out is revolting. Oh fucking shut up man. Don't don't diss my boy Lloyd. Detective Detective Don. Randy, maybe, maybe you could argue a case for Randy. He's a bit of a, a bit of a dog for the ladies. But don't diss my boy Lloyd. Don't diss my boy Lloyd. It's reminding me of uh, uh, Tita's mum. Tita's mum in uh, Sky. Fucking dissing Agate, man. I'm thinking, this woman has no right. Has no right. This absentee mum. Has no fucking right. Who is this woman? Maria Bell. This is my boy Lloyd. I'm going where I'm having to hike in the mountains. This bitch needs to be shown her place in the kitchen. <laughs> she's a, I think she's a secretary. She should go back to her desk. Know your place. Know your role. And shut the hell up. Back when The Rock was good at his job. Now he's in movies and he's apparently the highest paid actor in the world this year. Which is like, what? But like The Rock isn't like, The Rock isn't even a good actor. He was a better wrestler than he was an actor. She's the daughter of the president. Yeah, she's the daughter of the president of the IBC. So she's basically rich, privileged, fucking white girl. Fucking has the audacity to come up to my boy Lloyd and call him a mangy mutt. Well, she's probably lived in luxury. Lloyd lost his older brother. He fucking went to the academy for years. She sat up here in her ivory tower. Fuck off, man. Show us to the terminal, yeah. Do your job. Do what your daddy tells you. Do what your daddy tells you. Off he goes. Look at that strut, man. I tacked her a retreat if I've ever seen one. Ugh, that oaf. You're dissing your pops now. I wasn't finished talking. Nah, f you know what? Fuck this bitch, man. Show, show us. D do your job. Do your tour guide job for us, you bellend. I can take us. I can take us there. Stop dissing my boys. Stop dissing the, the boys, the crew. A built physique like yours demands to be shown off in a suit like a real man. What are you on about, man? I'm a bona fide Casanova. I don't need no suits. 
Tell her, tell her, fucking tell her, Andy. Tell her you don't need no business suits. Don't get me wrong, though. I would never try to seduce Ellie, uh, L, uh, especially during a romantic moonlit night, like <laughs> moonlit night. You know, like my main man Lloyd right here. <laughs> oh, stammer. oh, day. He's... Why have you got to do that, man? Why have you got to grass up Lloyd? Why have you got to fucking throw Lloyd under the bus, man? I mean, it's true, but, you know, there's a time and a place, and certain people. Oh my, leave Lloyd! Man, I always hate this. I always, like, I'm gonna say this, I hate it when it happens in anime, I hate it when it happens in this. When there's a misunderstanding, and the woman has to beat up the man due to misunderstanding. I guarantee you, role reversal, people would complain. But it's just the thing, just the thing. She's capable of picking Lloyd up. I can guarantee you in a proper fight, Lloyd would, you know, knock her teeth in. Not that I promote, you know, that kind of shit, unless it's warranted. But she needs to be fucking, you know, don't grip him, don't grip him by the, this dude's a cop. This dude's a cop. Legit, if she does something, she could be done. In real life, she could be done for that. She could be done for this shit, in real life. Gripping a cop like that and fucking. It's fucking rich bitch. Shall I show you to the terminal room? Yeah, hurry up. Do your job, man. Noth uh, maybe she's Ouroboros. Nothing will happen. She's the daughter of a banker. True. True. I was the only one with the fire. I was about to choke slam you back there. Fuck off. Fuck all this bullshit, man. Do you lead us to the terminal? Lead us to enough of this preamble bollocks. I've had enough of you ragging on my boys. Look at that walk. Look at that fucking outfit, man. She looks like she gets slammed every other evening. Wearing shit like that. Short skirts. Famous international banker crossbow. Right, now we can head down. What the fuck is my dog barking? You know what? Hold on, give me a sec. I'll be back in a sec. My dog's barking. Actually, I might might take my break now. I'm going to take my break. I'll be back in five minutes. Then we'll continue. But I'll be five minutes. No more, no less.
Alright, I am back. I am back. Let's get this show on the road. I'm gonna quickly save. And this bitch is gonna lead us to the terminal. This wench. Yin was it? This is where it turns out she's Yin, and I get to beat her ass. Unfortunately, I'm sure you probably figured out a thing or two already. Hear me out on this. Okay, so what's Lloyd's? What if I told you? See, this is what I was thinking. I was thinking that the boy sent the orb mail, hacked into the IBC, sent the orb mail, pretending he was Yin. The threat letter was actually from Yin. This orb mail we received isn't from Yin. I said it a bit earlier. I didn't say it quite the same way. But but I, I thought this might be it. The boy hacked in or something like that. Welcome back. I'm uh, watering my garden. <laughs> watering your garden. <laughs> Is all but straightforward. Meanwhile, if you recall the orb, man. Yeah, the orb mail was very cryptic. The the threat letter was very definitive. Oh, the orb mail is written with an old-fashioned diction. Yeah, it, it feels different. We didn't see right through it when we first received the orb mail. A few possibilities come to mind already. For example, what if Yin doesn't operate alone? Their accomplice could have sent us the orb mail. Another possibility is that Yin intentionally wrote them differently to throw us off. I could list off an endless number of possibilities and quite frankly, it wouldn't be smart of us to continue investigating based off of assumptions. So it's possible, maybe Yin's multiple people maybe. An organisation of Yin. <laughs> There needs to be be a day where there's, you know, multiple versions of me. Then the world would be right. <laughs> Welcome to basement uh, floor five. This floor houses the IBC's main terminal. The terminal room is right down the stairs. Okay. Since we lack, well, if some, if it is this kid, if a kid can hack into the IBC. I'd be concerned about leaving your client's uh, details down here. We could have a national scandal on our hands of client. De this happened. Uh, this actually happened in the UK. I think. What bank was it? It wasn't my bank. I'm trying to. I can't remember what bank it was, but everyone's information was leaked and they lost like. Tons of money. People were fucking pissed off, rightfully so. Was it was it Lloyd's TSB? Or was it NatWest? I can't remember. It was it was a long time ago though. Okay, let's go down to the terminal. See if we can find any evidence. Oh fucking no. Bloody hell, yeah, this, is, this is looking a bit like... This room, I literally watched this last night, The Truman Show. This reminds me of the room in The Truman Show where they're watching, like they've got all the screens up and they're watching him. Poor these computers, man. This is even bigger than the than Capel from Sky. By the Epstein Foundation. I believe the Burl's high-speed cruise also utilizes a si similar system. Oh, excuse me. The famous Arce, the Arce. That that ship is a. Uh, it's like a golden seagull. I don't know why I said golden seagull. Golden hawk would have been better. As this, I don't know why seagull came to mind. Oh shit, Tanya, Tanya, Summer. How you doing, Tanya? 
handle a vast network of information. I hope you've had a good morning. Oh bloody hell. Yeah, these are two guys that are down there with a fucking all the time. <laughs> Researcher Clay. Our recent simulations are proving to be extremely successful. Available with the Crossbell Police Department. There's a possibility that our main terminal has been hacked into uh, by an external source. Hello, hen yeah, I've heard, I've heard things. Things are a bit tough, right? For you, makes it hard for you to hop on voice and all that stuff. I understand, I understand. But like, if you ever feel like you need a place, like. As I always say to other people, right? Just message me on DMs, like, you know. I like I do I do voice chats. Like I, I can easily just do a one-on-one -on -one voice chat with people. Like it doesn't have to be in groups or anything. Somebody hacked into the network, into the mainframe. That don't like one thing that you need to avoid doing. Don't isolate yourself so much from other people when when you get down. I know it's hard. Like you want to be alone, but sometimes sometimes it isolating just makes things worse. Happened with Moen last year. He isolated and he felt like shit. Interesting that one of you two sent me old mail. None of these two. It's the kid. The kid we saw at the start of the chapter. Hopefully things get better. They will. Thing, things don't remain stagnant. That's one thing that people assume. Is that something will last forever. Life is never stagnant. History has never been stagnant. You know, things change. Things change over time. I, I, I told more in this once. Like when he was really down, right? I told him, I can't tell you what date it's going to come. Could be tomorrow, could be a month from now, could even be a year. But the day will come when something just changes. Like things won't be as bad, you won't feel like this. Happened to me. Happened to me. Still kind of does now and then. Kind of logs. But that, that's why you need people, right? You need people to reaffirm to you that, that that's the case. Even if you believe it, even if you're like, yeah, that's the truth. When you're depressed or when you're in a, you know, a low mood, that's not what your mind thinks of. Your mind doesn't think of the truth or things logically. It thinks very emotionally and thinks, what if this will happen? Like, it's just as, li like, when you think about it, you know, you have as much proof that it's, that something really bad is going to happen as you do as much proof that it's not going to happen. But for some reason, people assume, like they instantly start going, oh my god, the worst case scenario is going to happen. When that's, it's not necessarily always the case. You have as much proof of that happening as you do it not happening. Pretty solid evidence our hackers come from outside. Yeah, it's the kid. I'm telling you, it's the blonde kid. Exactly, that's why I decided to get out of my cave. My thoughts are not helping. To yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you need to be around other people. You need to have that connection with people. You know, even if it's just, even if it's hopping on a voice call with other people, asking for like a one-on-one -on -one chat, and I'm not saying much. Just having been surrounded by other people, it helps, it helps, it really does. And you need that consistently. The issue with depression is if you don't have it consistently, like you keep on repeating, you end up in an infinite cycle. It's what people don't understand about people in depression, is that while you shouldn't sacrifice yourself up to these people, you need to understand that you, you need to give them a level of consistency so that they know that they have something. So that their mind has understood that that is the case, right? 
it's always important. People forget. People take depressed people to the beach for a day, and they have a whale of a time. And even say, "I really enjoy my day today. Thank you for this." Second, they go home, they're depressed again. Somewhere in the city. You know, it's not necessarily meaning that you have to take that depressed person to the beach every day, but you have to take that depressed person to the beach a lot in order for them to actually understand what the meaning of going to the beach with that person is. Access. Oh shit. What's she doing? What's Tio doing? Oh my fucking god. What the fuck? Tio Sawa. Tio Sawa. She's fucking... Analyzing all terminal logs. She's like a computer whiz. I mean, I guess we could have got that from being part of the Epstein Foundation, right? Yeah, just letting him... Like, I remember someone said... Um... Be there for them even if they hate you. Be there for them even if they hate you for it. Because at least they hate you. My headphones disconnected for a second. My family thought I was attending my psychology class. <laughs> See, that's how, like, I, I don't have a degree in that. But that just says, like, I know from personal experience enough to, like, be able to, you know, give my knowledge on that particular subject. I'm transferring any suspicious logins to you, so please examine them for me. This reminds me of, I think it's War Games. An old film. This reminds me of War Games, and it, this room also reminds me, because I watched it last night. I literally watched it last night. The Truman Show. That's a f By the way, if you've never seen The Truman Show, you need to fucking watch that movie. I'd be surprised if someone hasn't watched it, but if you haven't watched that fucking movie. I watched it ages ago, but I rewatched it again last night. I fucking love that film. Jim Carrey. One of his best films, I think. You could say I know a thing or two about awful technology. <sighs> Looks like they're just about finished. So she found... She found the connection. Bingo, I got it. Control Terminal 8 in the Geofront's B sector. We detected an unauthorized login from there. The Geofront? Someone's in the... The Undercity. It was in Geofront B sector. Northwestern part of the city. Henlo, Henlo. That should be the residential street and entertainment district. <laughs> I swear, people always want me to say UWU. They want me to say it on stream, so that they that they can get a clip of me saying it. I'm not like Moen. I'm not gonna fall into that trap. I'm not gonna end up saying what's it the <laughs> the what was he what was it he said on Friday thirteenth. Skinny big balls or something. Uh, to be honest, I don't really care if someone does clip it. But I'm going to try and avoid saying it. <laughs> Just for my own sanity. That's how my cousin... Tannis, that's how my cousin calls me. Tannis. Tannis is from Borderlands. The psychotic sociopath. She's like a professor. No, archaeologist, not professor. I suppose that she's a professor, but she's an archaeologist. Tio, someone. I can't, I can't pretend I have any idea what you did, but you definitely helped us. Tio tots nothing short of perfection. Yes. I don't believe I did anything extraordinary. Besides, I'm a member of a special support section too, it's the least I could do. So I guess we're heading to the Geofront then. Which will be a dungeon. Maybe that's where the boss for this chapter is going to be. Maybe. I know there's one hidden quest I have left in this chapter. 
that I'm gonna have to look out for. But I don't know whether it's now or not. I don't think it's now. You can misspell my name, whatever you want, except calling me uh, Tatiana. I think I knew a Tatiana, actually. I did! I did know a Tatiana. Where did I know her from? Was it in college? Tatiana? She had blonde hair. I have a lead, but now, nah, but wow, I'm exhausted. What about Titiana? <laughs> what about Titiana? Is that better? I wonder whose fault that was exactly. It's rare to see someone not specialised in orbital technology reach her level of proficiency. Mariah Bell isn't an engineer, is she? Business management. Yeah, I suppose it's because her dad is a banker, right? So is that what she wanted to hire you for, Ellie? The old dude was super passionate. What, uh, the, the, the Etta, right? Everyone here in Colombia misspelled my name like that. In Colombia, they misspell your name. He's been teaching me various life lessons through stories ever since I was little, but... Oh, it's a more common name than Tanya. Okay, I see. That's, but it's longer. Like, how how do you say Tatania? Like, <laughs> usually people shorten names because they can't be bothered to say the longer version of it. In Colombia, it seems like they say the longer name and it's still wrong. <laughs> the longer wrong name than the shorter right name. <laughs> it's, it's weird to me. I guess because it, maybe it's common, that's why, but like... If you don't have a common name, then surely you would remember that. That's, it's so weird to me. Okay, we're heading to Geofront, I guess. People don't make sense. Look, look at America with the people who don't want to wear bloody masks. It, it doesn't make a lick of sense. Any, any counterpoint they make usually falls in on itself and in the majority of the time the only argument is my freedom i want my freedom my right to not wear a mask like fuck off I, everyone else has a right not to be killed or, or be affected by corona i have a right to not pass corona on to my dad i have that right so for everyone else's sake you know don't be a dick my face my choice I fucking hate that. That's such dumb logic. My life, my choice. Don't don't come in here and, you know, spread your corona at me. Because you don't want to wear a mask because of your rights, right? Fuck off with that shit. Those people need to... Like, honestly... I, I've heard people say this. Take take the people who, who say that, stick them in a room and just flood corona in. See how, see how not wearing a mask then... Be having you know fucking around with your your freedom your freedom see how far that gets you fucking hate like it that pisses me off it legit pisses me off because I could get corona and I'm not worried about getting it myself I'm worried about it passing to my dad I swear if I get corona I swear if I get corona and I pass it on to my dad because some fucker didn't wear a mask I might I can't say it on the stream but I would. I would do something. I'm not going to say it on stream because then people are going to legit think that I'm a psychopath. But I think I would lose it. I would actually legit lose it. I'm being. I'm actually being serious, not like jokingly. I'm being fucking serious. It would piss me off to no end. How dare you think your freedom is more important than everyone else's? I will be like Ellie in Last of Us 2. I will I will go on a rampage. I'll go on a rampage, but unlike Ellie, I won't stop at the last person. I'll end it. I'll 
fucking end it. Reminder to never meet Baker IRL. Nah, like, unless you, the only time that I'll get, like, physically aggressive is if you fuck me over seriously. Like, seriously. Or piss me off, like, you piss me off too far, I get very aggressive. But other than that, like, I'm, I'm usually chill, I can usually calm down. I'm a lot better than I used to be, that's for sure. I used to, I used to just fucking slam people's heads in doors. Slam people's heads in doors, smash them against, you know, iron fences, like, like, iron pole fences. Punched a dude in the face. Just like he just kept, kept walked up to me and just fucking straight right into the head. But I'm I'm okay. I like <laughs> I'm a lot better than I used to be. That's for certain. Well, where am I going? Like me and Phil are are like in that regard. We were both very like physically aggressive people when we were younger. Near the canal on Residential Street. Okay. Same with Moen. Moen used to be very uh, aggressive when he was younger like 10 15 years ago now we're just verbally aggressive because <laughs> we've got to this point in our lives where we're like we're just we're, we're too tired to get into fights about everything Here we go, Geofront B sector. This is like the vaults. Man, I'm in a Discord full of demons. Hey, don't act like you're any better, Simbad. We know we, we you've talked about the stuff. We we've heard you talk about these things. You ain't no saint either. We're all a Discord. F f basically, we were Discord of demons, but are trying trying to become angels. <laughs> we're trying to be better. We're trying to be better. We're trying to redeem ourselves. It's like Richard. Richard in Sky first chapter, second chapter and third. A dude who sent the entire of Le Berlin to disarray and then wanted to redeem himself. I, I miss fighting with guys sometimes. I don't. <laughs> I don't because I, I did some shit I'm not proud of. Like I actually permanently disfigured someone's face not super badly but like I'm not proud of that I'm not like I don't want to go back to that version of me <laughs> Simbad Simbad to say that but I'm happy with the me now I'm happy with the me now I don't need to change for anybody Taking Tanya and leaving ASAP not safe anymore. <laughs> Crazy mo. <laughs> oh fuck off with it. I hate when the controller doesn't work properly. Ah fuck it man. I'm gonna just attack this one then. Ikimas. Ikimas. Here we go. Persona. Persona team up. Okay, oh fuck. I guess we need- oh! I thought maybe this was a bridge that hadn't opened- oh fucking hell. Robots. I'm gonna assume they're weak to... Blue Arts. I'm just gonna assume this. I don't actually know. I'm just gonna guess. Oh fuck off man. There we go. Oh god, they self-destruct. Okay, so they are weak to blue arts. I need to move him away then. Lloyd needs to move away from me. This is another section. Yeah, th this is section B. We're heading here as part of the story. Uh, because we f we found out that we got this letter from this mysterious Yin. Who's responsible for like this threat letter he sent earlier on. But we recently found out that um, someone hacked... A terminal in or hacked from a terminal in the, this sector to the IBC which is where the letter was sent from 
I'm also coming to the conclusion that, um, that, like, it's not the Yin that we've been looking for. Like, the Yin who sent the threat letter and the Yin who sent us the letter through the IBC aren't the same person. So, we're heading there now. I think Power Smash will knock him back far enough. Yeah, it will. Nice. I don't know how much... I I'm, should be close to the end of this chapter. I should be. I don't know why it's taking so damn long. Part of it is because I'm waffling a bit. About random shit, but... Also, there's just so much... Like, it's such a long chapter, this. But I want to get it done today. I want to finish chapter 2 today. Like, because it's not hot here in here, where I am at the moment. Like, it's it's a, it's warm, but it's cool. It's like, there's a cool air, like a cool breeze. So I can go long today. I can go for a long stream. So hopefully I can get chapter 2 done by today. That's my plan. That's my plan. Oh, fucking hell, these robots. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, fuck, I hate when the controller doesn't even work properly. Easy, easy, easy. Only issue here now is that I'm starting to run out of EP. I don't know how much EP charge I have. Let's move Tio away. Okay, that's fine, Randy can take the hit. Uh, getting ahead of you but can't be asked. Nah, it's fine, it's fine. D don't worry too much about it, like... I mean, you'll probably, you, you, if you really can't like you could spend like a couple days and you could catch up to me because i'm limited most of the time by uh, how much i stream so i only stream this three times a week right and i can stream for long periods but like you know it just depends on the day so you you could get ahead like easily so it's it's not a problem like But also a lot of people are like, they're thinking about playing this game when it officially gets like official release, which it might do soon. Um, they're waiting for that, but they're still watching me play it because they want to they wanna see the story. They want to see the story for this game because they, they haven't seen it. Oh, fuck. I want to sneak I thought that, Belen. No, 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 no. Like, I used to get that about Death Stranding with me and Yvette. Yvette would always get ahead of me. Like, you know, like, she would be, she'd be doing, like, a, a delivery or something that I, I hadn't got to yet. And so it would always be like, shit, man, like. But then I got to a point where I was like, fuck this game, man, I can't be bothered. And she, f she finished the game. She started it after me and finished it before me. I still haven't finished Death Stranding. I still haven't finished Death Stranding. And I'm not going to. I have no plans to finish that game. I was surprised. I was surprised that Yvette couldn't finish. Um, she couldn't finish Final Fantasy VII Remake. But she could finish Death Stranding. I was so confused at that. But, I guess it is what it is, you know. Sometimes that happens. Fuck it, never mind. Tateto, Tateto. Fucking love that. What are these things weak to? 
They're weak to... Oh shit, they're weak to a lot of shit. I guess they're... You know, they're not too... Okay, fire isn't that great. They're not too damaged by uh, physical attacks. So you've got to use arts in these guys. There we go. I know, but I want to go oh shit with you at the same time. Yeah, it's true. Like, either, either, either. Like, I sometimes get that right. Like, I like watching things with people because then it's like a com That's why I even, that's why I even play, like, that's one reason why I stream these games instead of play it on my own. Because there's a shared experience going on here, right? You know, we're all, we're all sort of experiencing this game as like a group. Like, it's a group adventure. I don't know of it enough, but I'm guessing she has an interesting taste. Um, Yvette just likes simulation games. Like games where you survive and you have like tons of things that like, you got to drink water, you got to take a leak, you got to do this. That's why she'd probably like Death Stranding more, because it's one of those games. It's a game where you, you have to replace your shoes, because your shoes are getting worn, right? It's one of those kind of games. So I guess that's why she liked it over something like, just like a JRPG, right? Which she doesn't play a lot of to begin with. Like before F FF7 Remake, the only JRPGs she actually played were like FF15 and Pokemon. That was it. So I, to I told her to play, I recommended she get FF10. You know, it's easy to get into. It's a good game. I got, I, FF10 has one of the few uh, game romances that makes me tear up. Because it's actually a legit good romance. Like, it's handled well. Not like, oh, like, you know, we're, we're all awkward around each other, like... It's actually like a really good, um, romance. Uh, use the EP charges and then conserve EP if you run into a boss, you're fucked. These, yeah, but these things are like resistant to physical. These things are resist, like, very hard to kill by just hitting them. I haven't, I have a decent amount of EP charges anyway. I have a decent amount, so it's fine. You're a fan of... Nah, not really. Uh, like, it's not to say that I can't see the merits in it and I don't enjoy when romance is there. But sometimes I feel that, like, romance can be sometimes a bit of a detriment at times. Because there's only so much that you can achieve with it. Um, but I'm, no, I'm not really a fan of romance. I just like the romance in uh, FF10. That was actually a good romance. Like, a well-written romance. What the fuck am I supposed to do here? Where the hell am I? Oh, I guess I turned these right. Wait, never mind. We had this combo before and I forgot. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of romance. I don't mind it. You know. But But I remember watching um What was it? Uh, I hated the romance in um I hated the romance in uh Rogue One. I felt that was one of the worst romances that I'd seen in a film. Because it felt so hammed up. Um, you know, like... These two people who despised each other, now suddenly, you know, are together by the end. And she had legit reasons for hating this guy. Like, legit reasons. For some reason, by the end, that's all forgotten. And they're, you know... Bloody smooching on the beaches, you know, everything goes to shit. Also, the fact that that dude gets shot like a couple times in the chest, then hits, like, falls and hits multiple beams, like metal beams on the way down. I was like, come on, man. I was like, fuck off with this shit, man. Like, I get with Star Wars, you know. Suspend disbelief a little bit, but I I couldn't accept that. I was like, "Come on, you're pulling my leg here." Nice. How's Abuela doing? Yeah. 
How's the fam? Curio bomb. Okay. There's someone I missed. Taken care of. <laughs> and I'm not. I was gonna make. It sounded very ominous the way you worded that, Tanya. Naval Dream. Yeah, exactly. I hated that romance. Everything else about Rogue One I like. Like, I love the stakes behind it. Um, I love the atmosphere around it. I do feel people, like, this idea of people getting picked off one by one. Like, you're like, okay, this guy's next. This guy's next up on the list. But, like, it was okay. Like, it, you know, it's not... You don't hate it. The romance, I legit fucking hated. I could not stand that romance. That is romance and film done poorly. Yeah, Tanya, exactly, that's what I read it as. Like, taken care of, like, like the Mafia. I mean, yeah, there's no... <laughs> yeah, the romance in Rogue One, let's pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Tanya, like, I just read it like that, and that's the first thing that came up, I apologise. <laughs> it was a bit funny. Tanya Sama, Tanya Sama. This has probably brought the thing down, right? I can probably get to. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, it brought this down. I probably have to come back. Maybe I'll come back around, maybe. Makes even more sense, yeah. Colombia. Colombian Mafia. So I do this. Hold on. I think I fucking... Am I stupid or something? I know how to get to that chest. I'm fucking dumb. I'm dumb sometimes. I don't realise the most obvious things that I have to do here. I bring that down and I can get that chest. I'm not leaving until I've done that chest. Um, let me heal Lloyd because I think this is going to be a monster chest. I'll just use a tear bomb. That's fine. Kill bombs are still useful at this stage in the game. In Sky, they'd be ma basically made redundant by like Tira bombs. Come on, group up. I need them to group up because if they all grouped up, I could then have used Tio's uh, Esprit maybe. So on this. Holy bullet. I love it. I love when I get a counter. I love that. I love the feeling of just an enemy not... Like, I always hated when I'd repeatedly get misses in the earlier games. Now it's like the tables have turned. Now the tables have turned. You're fucked. Someone's like... There's someone's like... What's he gonna do? Defense down. That's what I like to see. That's what I fucking love to see. Power smash. Yeah, Tear Bomb would be useless in battle. Yeah, exactly. Like, Tear Bomb would only, like, heal, like, 100 HP or something. Even even in Sky first chapter, Tear Bomb became very redundant very quickly. Very quickly. In this game, it's still kind of useful. Like, it's weird. Like, Lloyd was under three-quarter health. And it still held him back to full, which is like strange for uh, for this. Stun breaking. Right, never mind. Hey, easy, easy, easy. Yeah, Zite greatness. Zite the divine wolf. He's so damn useful. Zite is probably one of the most useful. Abilities and like, there's so many useful abilities in this game. The only issue is, but to counteract that, 
how useful the abilities are. The bosses in this game have death blows very early on. Like, very early on. And you should not find death blows this early in the game. Like, one hitting abilities are usually like three quarters of the way through, maybe. Maybe final dungeon. This game gave you some right at the prologue. Like right off the bat. What the fuck? No, fuck it. Fuck off. I, f I want to get advantage on him. Come on. Wiggle over in the other direction. There we go. That's lovely. Your behind is ready for me to sh shove my baton up your ass. Give you a good old pounding. Fucking take it. Fucking take it. Fam. Power smash is also really damn useful in this game. Having an attack delay. Having an attack delay so early on. Like, Sherizard had a similar thing. She'd have Heaven's Kiss, right? Which, you could just fucking break the game. If you if you speed down, and then Heaven's Kiss, it's like a broken, broken formula. Death Blow is the suckiest ailment, fam. Hate those. No, that's, that's not Death Blow, that's Petrify. Death Blow is one hit. It's just a random one-hit ability. So, like, Death Blow was something that you could have on Shadow Spear in Sky. But that was Petrify. Petrify was the the thing that like it freezes members and then one hit and you're dead. Kind of thing. Oh no, di she did have Death Blow, didn't she? I remember that actually. No, she did have Death Blow. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot she had Death Blow. She just had Petrify, I think, in that fight too. She had a lot of like Ren in second chapter that fight. Um In that fight in second chapter, uh, it's fucking annoying. Like I remember when I did her fight, three party members died right at the start because she used her S break. Heaven's Kiss is better because enemies could have resistance to attack delay, but but Power Smash is still CP. Yeah, um, that's what. Yeah, it, yeah, that's that's. But um, to be honest, I don't notice that. Like honestly, I haven't come across any enemies that have had resistance to attack delay. And it, I think it's good for enemies that also had, um, uh, she had like, um, what was it? What am I talking about? I've forgotten, forgotten my train of thought. She had like, yeah, there's a bit of delay, I think, a bit of a delay. I just remembered about her death blow, her death blow S break thing she did. How big is the delay, actually? Let me see on my end. Because I've been having issues with the stream lately. Like Mom was saying last night when I was streaming New Vegas. That I was having some issues like quality wise. But quality just dipped. And I think Twitch does this thing. Where it degrades the quality of your stream. Um, because I'm not like a partner or affiliate. They degrade it for like free. free use. Let me see. Let me see. I want to see the stream. To see how big the delay is on my end. Oh fucking hell. Like. Play! Play, you shit! Captions issue detected. What is this fucking... The game sounds keep changing pitch when it's on. Why is that? That's so strange. Like, how bad is the delay? Let me see. Okay, it's not, it's not super bad. Maybe it is. That's kind of... What's going on with Twitch lately? Man. I swear they need to sort their shit out. They need to sort their shit out. They keep on... I hate when sites update. You know. Oh, the UI is new. We've changed. We've made the UI... And the site has problems. Like, they don't fix the problems with the site. Fucking hell. Eggman, Eggman robot.
Like, I used to stream fine on here. Now it's like... Oh, bloody hell. Oh, no, bandana. Power smash. Is he resistant to okay, so he's not resistant to attack delay, good. Man, I haven't played a Sonic game in ages because most of them suck, but I really miss them. You should play um if you haven't played you probably might have played it already, but Generations was a good Sonic game. And also Sonic Mania. They really it was like a fan made kind of uh well it wasn't fan it was released by Sony uh, not Sony, Sega. Um but it was like the levels were made by fans so you had like a bunch of like kind of like uh retro inspired levels yeah sonic game like i think it's because it's, it's, it's so weird right I, I, I don't know why it is that they're still shit I think it's it's primarily because they, they they don't quite have the platforming down. That they haven't quite figured how to do it in a more modern um, kind of way. Um, that's why Generations was liked because it it mixed old with new. Like this old idea of um, of platforming. Oh my God! What is you know what? Fuck this. I don't care if this, you know, causes damage, like they self-destruct or anything, like fuck it man. They keep on dragging me around, Sonic Force has made the hap me the happiest person alive, uh, uh, taunting because I would have wanted, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I haven't played a Sonic game, I know that Sonic Forces. Like, I think I have Sonic Forces, maybe. I got it in, like, a bundle thing. Like, a bunch of other Sonic games. Um, I, I, I might have played it. Maybe. I don't know, because they all start blending into one. The newer Sonic games. But, um... I haven't actually seriously played a Sonic game in ages. Fucking ages, man. I think if I did play it, I didn't finish it. Hello, bandana. Oh, team mash. Hey, what is this? They just nerfed Tio's health in literally two seconds. What the fuck was that? Where is my reviving? Where is it? When did I run out of reviving bomb? What the fuck? I swear I had reviving bomb when I came in here. What? When the fuck did I run out of revive bomb? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake, man. Nah, I think I might have... I think she has... Yeah, she has revive magic. So T2 will get revived. But look, at they keep on sucking me around. Trying to suck my dick, these things. And the issue is... Because I can't... Because I can't properly get distance on them, they're going to eventually end up causing damage. I don't want to be have too many of my party members dragged in. Oh god god, no 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 no! Fuck off man! Fuck off with your repetitive sucking! Fucking dick sucking lips these robots have. Fuck off with this, I fucking hate this man. And don't have enough EP because... Fucking, fucking Ellie's like 
bloody useless. Oh my fucking god. Suck, suck, suck. That's all they do, like bloody Nunu off Teletubbies. Like fucking Nunu off Teletubbies, fucking cunts. Now I don't want to kill this thing. Fuck this thing, man. Fuck this fat fucking Eggman looking robot. Like, I didn't even know that I didn't have... I swear, I swear to God, I thought I had revive, reviving bombs. I don't know when the fuck I lost them. But I would have made a mental note. Get reviving bombs. So I don't know when the fuck that happened. Oh, fuck, I'm just gonna cause... Maybe suction. Fucking suck in me again. And she's run out of... How how little EP does Ellie have? Seriously, you know what? I need to... Fucking controller doesn't fucking work. What day, what a lovely day. Fuck this, man. Fuck these, these new new robots. These fucking new North Teletubbies. Lloyd's nearly dead. Here we go, sucking again. Suck, suck, suck. A fucking Thailand, Thailand prostitute. In Bane's voice, what a lovely, lovely day. This thing is probably going to self-destruct. I know it. I know it. Oh god. No! Fuck off. You know what? Fuck this. Fuck this robot. Fuck this sucking robot. This blowjob bot. Fuck this. I'm, I can't be... Teal didn't get XP. Fuck it, man. I can't be fucking ass with this. Suck you in. Blow up. What is this nonsense? Whoever designed these, I hope you fucking living in a box. Living in a fucking box in the middle of nowhere. Fucking cunt. Hate that. Hate that. Hate that. Suck you in. I knew that was going to happen. I thought that maybe Randy wouldn't fire off his arts. Like he would have a couple turns. Nope. He does it right away. The game finally decided. The, the game finally decided that it wanted. Fucking. Him to do it quickly. So fucking annoying man. You know what? I'm ta I'm taking Ellie's water arts away. I'm taking this away. I'm I'm gonna give this to bloody Tio. She's shit. Ellie is legit shit when it comes to EP. She has fucking none. I need well, I need to open up more orbits maybe. Sometimes I wish I wasn't streaming these games. I wouldn't be making these fucking mistakes. I waffle on too much about nothing half the time. And I don't pay attention to what's going on around me. That's the issue. Fuck it, here we go. He's, this is the kid. This is the kid I was talking about. I'm gonna slap this kid up. If he was responsible for these robots, I'm gonna slap this kid up. I'm gonna be like an Umineko. Rosa and her daughter. I'm gonna fucking smack, smack him. Run company sports car. Not gonna lie, my family woke me up for the millionth time today like the annoying cunts they are. But the baker age told me. I'm glad that my misfortune it can be someone else's <laughs> fortune. <laughs> I'm 
Because it certainly ain't mine. These parts are really hard, man. Doubt anyone could track it back to me. Hey, here we go. Here we fucking go. Blonde Bellend. Yin was Yin was yammering about, so he does know Yin. What? Some dumb cops were able to track down a genius like myself. Jonah Sacred. Oh shit! So they know each other. Run away from the foundation, you know. How did you end up in a dark place like this? We both worked in the same Epstein Foundation research laboratory. Our specialty is on two opposite ends of the spectrum, so it's not like we know each other that well. So he's Epstein Foundation too. So I guess when she was doing all that computer with stuff in the IBC, it was like computer ways versus computer ways. Epstein versus Epstein. This dude hurt the foundation. Uh, imagine if Moan and I played Friday the 13th and I was singing the style of boats and hoes, pocket knives, pocket knives. I've got to give, have me my pocket knives and I get him, uh, and I get him off me leading to Moan saying it's always those fucking pocket knives. It's always the fucking pocket knives, the fuck Satan. Yeah. Why is it always when I'm Jason you find all the fucking pocket knives? Why is it always the fucking Vanessa's? I wish peop more people kept those Friday 13th streams alive. I wish, man. Honestly, that was one of the golden eras on Moin's channel. If you missed the Friday 13th days, you missed out a great period. Great period in, in Moin's channel. Funniest shit I've ever seen. Like, when you watch his... Um, when you watch his... Uh, Old, older Friday 13th videos. He's very calm when he's Jason. But there's a moment in one of the videos where Morn just snaps. He snaps and he was never the same after. So the Epstein Foundation is like a hacking academy for children. No, it's it's basically a research thing. Like researching on, on orbital technology and stuff. Like it was created by... Um, it was created by... Well, it was co-founded. So, you know Professor Russell from the Sky Trilogy games? He was one of the people working with Epstein when he made the foundation. So it's like a foundation, a research foundation for augments and stuff. Like, Tio's from it, she's using a staff. I don't know why this game focuses so much on child labour, pretty much. Like, Ren was, you know, for, for what was it, Patamata, right? Friday 13th is so fun for me, but I can only do the horror aspects here. Yeah. I would have been on this stream, but I, I, part of me was like, I just want to watch Moen. I just want to sit and watch Moen go on a murderous spree, so I never ended up getting the game. It's just too fun. Too fun watching those streams. Too good. Like the time. I can't remember, it was one of the newest, newer Friday 13th VODs that he has on his channel. I can't remember which one it was, but um, it's one of the newer ones. And it, the funniest thing, literally my, my chest was hurting. It might be one of the funniest things I've ever seen, was when Moen fell into that river three times. He tried teleporting there, trying to catch people while they were escaping, but he didn't realise that because you tried teleporting on the bridge, it just puts you in the river. And every time he would get more and more agitated, you could actually see, like, the fucking anger just intensifying each time it happened. I found it so funny. It was so fucking funny. Like, in comedy, there's the rule of three, right? You tell a joke three times, and that's enough. That happened three times. It was the perfect fucking joke. It was the perfect gag. It's too funny. Mm. 
Like, Morn doesn't find it funny, but I find it fucking hilarious. Got info from Erebonia, Calvod, Liberal, Remferia, Le Mans State, Arteria, you name it. This dude is like, um, what's the name in Persona 5? A fucking hacker girl. Power and greatness of the Orbital Network. Surrounding Burnett is so weak, all but delicious info is mine for the taking. Futaba, yeah, I think Futaba. Although not as creepy, I guess. I set up shop here as an informant. I get tons of regulars, I'm, a ma I'm making bank. Seems as if you are unaware of my temporary transfer to CPD. <laughs> Kitty. I ignore that just thinking out loud. Who's Kitty? Oh, is it a handle? Like a nickname. One of the P5 characters I actually like. I like Ryuji. I like Ryuji. In Persona 5. Ryuji's, Ryuji's just one of those guys, it's just like one of the boys, right? The, the likeable kind of dumbass. Persona always has that, right? The likeable dumbass. But I just, there's something about that character, that that kind of character archetype that I like. Um, because I always, like, I'm a fan. I think my favourite characters are comic relief characters that become serious or have a serious moment. That's why I like Hank Schrader in Breaking Bad. If you haven't seen Breaking Bad, I'm going to spoil it now, but you should have seen it by now because it's a fucking amazing show. But in Breaking Bad, Hank Schrader acts as like comic relief for like the first season and a bit. Like he, he's like the slightly racist, slightly racist, kind of slightly goofy cop, right? Um, and then by halfway through second season of Breaking Bad, he he shoots he shoots uh, Tico right. Um, Tico is it Tico or is it Tuco? Yeah, Tuco Tuco Salamanca. He shoots him, and then he becomes a police hero. Then he's sent to the Mexican border to you know work with the DEA right, like the DEA on the Mexican border. Um, and he fucking gets PTSD. He develops like PTSD from his time there. And I fucking his descent, like the the tragic thing about Hank Schrader, he, he's a hero in a world filled with villains, which is why he ends up dying right in season season five, because he acts like the hero. He acts like the, you know the, the, the guy who will stand up to the evil guy and won't back down, and that's what gets him killed. But I love it because he, he starts as like someone that is kind of a goofball, kind of, you know, not obno a bit obnoxious, a bit annoying. But um, then he grows into like a fully fleshed out character. It's why I like Sokka in Avatar, Avatar Last Airbender. He was a character who was a goofball, but he had a serious moment where he starts learning swordsmanship. Like, I love it. I love it when you take a character that isn't normally in a serious situation put them in that serious situation and then seeing them evolve as a character because you can have someone who's already been through trauma and been through that stuff you know but it's like an innocent naive goofy character being introduced to the reality of the world i love that i love that archetype Door has been opened by some of you to change me the tower of stars in here my wish tower of stars a message from yin Oh shit, are we going to go head on to Yin? There's good comic relief, and there's Jar Jar Binks style of comic relief. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks is bad comic relief. But I guess that comes with the fact that they couldn't actually really do anything deep with Jar Jar. Because they were gearing the prequels more at children, trying to introduce a new age to kids to Star Wars. Still, It still doesn't, you know, rectify or mean that his character is any better, but like... I suppose that's just the reason why it is what it is. Uh, this is the first time he's asked for something strange as this. He wears black 
and covers his face with a mask. He's some crazy assassin from Calvard's Eastern Quarter. I mean, he's just telling us stuff we already know. Oh boy, our youngster here is fearless, isn't he? Okay, so I guess we're gonna go meet Yin. We're gonna meet this mysterious Yin. Tower of the Stars that he mentioned. Tower of the Stars, something about that sounds eerily familiar. Stargazer's Tower, you know, on the southern outskirts of Crossbell. It's that tower from the Middle Ages that we saw in the Ursula Road. Okay. I guess we're going on a trip outside Crossbell. Like, while I do like running around Crossbell, I do like it when we're sort of let out of the confines of the city. I do feel that Crossbell is a, a better city than any of the Libero stuff. Like it feels large, it feels like an actual city. Grants while it felt big, I never felt Grants or felt like a city. It felt like a big town. Crossbell feels like a legit city. Dr. D uh, Dr. D says eat some. What is eat some? You ask? Eat some nuts? Dabs. <laughs> That's Dr. Frank George. Dr. Frank George greatness. Made me like braces more honestly. I disagree. I disagree. I felt sorry for, and especially in this chapter, I feel sorry for how the police are looked on as useless. When in actuality, like, a lot of the police are struggling, like, to actually do anything. Like, their hands are tied because of the political climate, right? So a lot of people are getting rap, like, like bad rap, for stuff that's not really in their control. Like, I do like the braces, but I feel, I feel like, I do feel for the police. Not all the police, because some of them are actually, like, corrupt. But, like, you know... The hot, like these, the, the special support division, you know, some of the investigative division. Not the, the entire CPD gets like shit on. I kind of feel a bit sorry for some of the people who who don't deserve the shit, who are trying to uphold justice. It's like, uh, what's his name, Dieter, the the uh, CEO of the bank here, right? He's saying that you know. <clears throat> People crave justice, but they don't have control over it. But Brace is the effective faction that we need in society. True, but I feel that it's the police's responsibility to do what the Braces are doing. Like, the, brace, the Braces are a neutral faction, right? So their, their <clears throat> jurisdiction isn't to <clears throat> protect and, 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 you know, recreate Crossbell. <clears throat> so my throat's my throat's getting a bit dry. Um, it's the police's job to do that, right? And I feel sorry for the fact that the police don't really have a lot of control over it because of the the climate of Crossbell. Like the braces, naturally, are there for the public, right? But I feel that you know. The police's main role is to do exactly what the braces are doing, and because they are an institution built by politics and the government, they can't um, <clears throat> they can't actually do anything to create the justice and peace that they should be able to, or they should be doing. Alright, there we go. I think this is when the hidden quest opens up. Uh, okay. I think we can sweep this one under the rug. I okay, guys, I hope Cold Steel isn't from the perspective of braces. Like I'd like it to be from the perspective of something else. Like we could have braces in our party, that's fine. But I do like seeing the world in different views. It's one about suffering a heavy loss, so maybe we shouldn't know fine. But I mean Lloyd said that they have jurisdiction that braces don't and I don't see it. Uh, braces were pretty involved in government affairs, and but they were they can't. So braces don't get 
aren't able to interfere with governments unless it's an official contract. If you've got a corrupt like pol political structure, you're not going to be able to do much. Like, you're not going to have people sending requests, right? Because there's not much you could do. Um, like, they, they can only get involved in it if it's directly requested of them. Uh, like, a citizenry request, not like a governmental affair, right? But, um, I mean, you do see it. They have made a point of it in this chapter that the special support division, because it's not technically the police, because it's not technically in politics and because it's technically not braces they have they have basically they found a loophole that no other organization has it's why ellie didn't go back into politics and why ellie didn't become a bracer was because the triple s division um was you know capable of of doing that arresting a ma mayor didn't seem but it was part of a request you know, it had been filed an investigation into uh, burning down an orphanage, right? It was it was an attack on the public, right? It was it was a public request made by the pu the safety of the public, which was a brace's duty, but just involved the arresting of a mayor because he was the culprit. A braces wouldn't be able to do the same as what these guys can do. Because they can't technically get... Because they're a neutral party, right? Their headquarters is in a neutral state, which is Le Mans state, right? Which is just built upon braces. So they're a neutral party. They can't get involved. They don't... Like, if that was the case, like, then they would be, you know, involved in wars. Which they're not. Like, that's what the army is involved with. So, like, just because they arrested a mayor doesn't necessarily mean that they can get involved in political matters it just so happened that the mayor was the culprit behind the burning of an orphanage which like was part of what they were investigating right as a request it's the same as like when they went into the the Lieber arc right it was a, it was requested from them that they go and do it despite the fact that you know it could very well have caused tensions between Erebonia and the Burl. they were put on that mission <laughs>